Hey guys, welcome to Daniel and Gian Talk, and today I'll be reviewing the 2019 film Judgmental High Kja, starring Kangana Ranut and Raj Kumar Rao. On Wikipedia, it describes the film as a neo noir black comedy crime thriller. It's kind of a fairly accurate statement, but to be honest with you, it is Birdman mixed with Requiem for a Dream, mixed with Train Spotting mixed with Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis, which is a short story about a mundane life and cockroaches, actually. If you've seen the movie, you know why cockroaches are important to this story. And if you've seen the movies that I've just mentioned, you can probably see where I'm coming from here. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I implore you to check those films out because they're actually pretty darn good films. Now, let's get into this film. Performance-wise, Kangana did a fantastic job portraying this person with multi-personality disorders, borderline schizophrenia. I mean, I mean, that's what you're led to believe, that she has clear mental disorder, some sort of disorder here. And to the point where it's being used as a plot device because no one believes her. Why would they believe her? Because she's kind of acts crazy and she kind of acts impulsive. And, and so when she's finally convinced that Raj Kumar is a killer, of course, no one believes her. Normally that would be enough to make your standard drama. What I just described is surface level though, because the film actually goes deeper than that. Besides the performance, what I really enjoyed is the cinematography. I enjoyed the editing. What I actually enjoyed about this, and I didn't find out until later, is that this film's actually based in part on the Ramayana and specifically the ending. Because the ending, I didn't really care for at first and then DNT informed me like why it was the way it was and that's actually why I took some time before I decided to review this film because I wanted to take a step back and then really think about the film with this new knowledge in mind. It really did help me to appreciate the film that much more. Now I really, really do appreciate this film for multiple reasons, one of them being that it's different. It's not your standard Hindi film. To be honest, it's a little more Western influence than most Hindi films, which is, might be the reason why it resonated with me so much. But besides that, it's just really is different. It takes approach to narratives differently. It, it allows for theatrical exhibitions and, and manifestations of the mind, you know, by playing tricks on the audience of what's real, what's not real, but doing so through cinema, doing so through the visual medium of cinema, you know, show, don't tell. And I appreciate that, you know, there could have easily been scenes where she was just locked up in a straitjacket or something. And there were scenes of her in an asylum, which actually were kind of comical, but ultimately the movie wasn't about her being batshit crazy the entire time. I mean, it really was, but it wasn't just about her being so crazy no one else believes her. No, people do believe her. People do resonate with her a little bit. So when I first watched this film, the moment I left the theater, I was, was kind of angry. Because as I mentioned before, the ending didn't sit well with me. Because it didn't feel justified. It didn't feel earned. And it just felt very in your face. And it wrapped up everything neatly in a bow. And because of the new information, it did change on me. And it did cause me to reevaluate everything that came before it. And but regardless of my reevaluation or not, there's certain things that I really did enjoy because it was very in your face and didn't hold any punches back. I mean, basically that abuse in the beginning of the film was pretty impactful and I loved how it was, it was edited to the beats of the drum. But even the moment where the family falls off, the husband and wife fall off the building and their heads basically explode on the floor. I mean, that was something I was not expecting. That was extremely violent. I didn't expect a lot of the plots and, and twists of the movie, but I enjoyed what I watched. I enjoyed the addition of the cockroach of like a manifestation of her mind. And you know, that's how you, that's how we were as an audience were able to judge that she wasn't basically hundred percent stable because at first we believed that the cockroach is there, but then as we start to see the plot evolve and she, you know, she steals the, the huge jug of pesticide and that didn't kill the cockroach. And you know, when he, she's talking to the cops, like, that all of these layers being added to the story just continued to elevate her insanity to the point where I liked it. The only thing I wish there was more of was her 
acting a little bit more normal. I mean, she was kind of just one note the entire film. Overall, I enjoyed the movie. This is a quick review because to be honest with you, it's kind of hard to review something like this because every single element is so particular. The movie was short, sweet, to the point. At no point did I feel like it was dragging. At no point did I, you know, anticipate the ending or, or anything like that. Like I said before, it, it did wrap up a little neatly, but now that I know it was an adaptation, it did ultimately serve that purpose well. Cinematography, as I mentioned before, was great through and through. It visually just looked good the whole time and actually was one of the main reasons why I was so stimulated the entire time because yes, it's one thing for the actor to portray crazy. It's one thing for a writer to write crazy, but it's another thing entirely to show crazy on the screen via lighting, via framing, via other things. Obviously the director has a hand in that as well, but the director and the cinematographer work arm in arm together to create this film and overall I did enjoy it. If I were to put a rating on it, I'd say it's a probably about a solid seven and a half, eight out of 10. Uh, eight now because I know how the ending uh, is. I'm definitely curious to recheck this film out and maybe I will in the future on DVD and basically reanalyze it because if you're wondering why this review is short or maybe I'm not going as in depth as I normally would, it's just because the film is kind of intricate. I'm not gonna say it's complex, but there's a lot of elements to this film to where I could literally discuss one part of the movie for an hour and not talk about anything and it's hard to do a spark notes version of this film you know a quick summary review of this because it is dense and it's weird to say that because if you watch the movie or if you were to hear me summarize the movie it's very straightforward it's pretty simple woman kills her parents grows up is a little bit mentally unstable because of that to the point where she does spend time in a mental asylum and someone moves in to her like a house apartment flat and the person that she's with she kind of like she's living with she's kind of obsessed obsessed with him and then to the point where all of a sudden when the house blows up she's basically in question for murder but it's not really i don't know see that's what i'm saying like even me trying to explain the plot already creates these weird elements where it, yes it's a simple straightforward plot but even me just trying to explain it again is kind of like already making me think well it's not really just this it's not really just her living in this house it's also this this and this and so i'm just gonna leave it at that but i do want to know what you guys in the comments had to say about this if you guys saw it and uh, the movie's not doing the best in the box office but it's kind of staying alive Overall though, like I said, that's my review, that's my rating. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and I will see you on the next one.